So for today, we're going to take a look at turning Nicolas Cage into Shrek. And the main thing I want to show you for that is uh, coloring a layer using sort of a, a secondary layer on top that has a color on it, and then blending that layer down. And you'll find that does a really good job. It allows you to really fine-tune the colors of things. It uh, you, gives you maximum control over that kind of stuff. So I want to turn them green, uh, and eventually I have already have this layer cut out with the horns, so I want to kind of match that green to the green of the horns. Or No, those are Shrek's ears, right? Those aren't horns. They're ears. Anyways, let's check it out and see how to do it. And thanks, everybody, for taking a look. If you were in my class last year, that's okay. You don't have to take a look, uh, but take a look now. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I need to get uh, <laughs> Mr. Cage's skin selected, so that's... Good old-fashioned uh, quick select tool is probably the best way to go. Uh, so I'm just going to go. I won't do a perfect job of this. I'll leave you guys to kind of do pixel perfect stuff. Uh, oh, I guess it helps if I'm on the right layer, hey? So I'll go to Nick's layer here. And again, I'm not going to do perfect job. Just good enough to get the point across. All right, good enough. Get those earlobes. Feels a little bit weird getting it so close to Nicolas Cage's earlobes. Not gonna lie, but here we are. He is pretty much ready to go. Definitely important to refine that edge. And as you can see, it's not beautiful. So I would probably go back and do a little more proper selecting. Don't forget about the refine edge smoothing, feathering. Actually, this might be a case where you actually would want to have some feathers, so it kind of blends in. Because this selection we're going to be using for coloring something. Um, I'll, I'll I'll just leave it kind of low for now. But feel free to experiment with that. Okay, I'm going to click OK, and what am I going to do with it this time? I'm not going to cut out the face. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy the face and put it on a new layer. And the way to copy something from one layer to another is, well, you can go to Edit and Copy, but everyone just presses Control-C, just like in any word process or anything. Control-C to copy and Control-V to paste, and look at clever Photoshop. Look what it's done. It made a whole separate layer already for us. Uh, how do I? I can zoom in this way, hey? Probably should have turned on that zoomer so it doesn't lag so hard when I try and do it now. There we go. Hey, look, it made, I, when I copy and paste it, it made a whole separate layer. Thanks, Photoshop. You're a doll. Okay, so now I, I, I just show you that, look, there's a, there's a kind of disembodied uh, head of Nicolas Cage. If that, that doesn't give you nightmares tonight, I don't know what will. Um, but what I'm going to do with it is I'm actually going to just get it selected again. And if you ever want to select a layer, all the pixels on a layer, Check this out, it's so nice. Hold down control, and then click on the thumbnail of the layer. So like, down here is the thumbnail of the layer, this little thing. I know my mouse is a little bit weird, sorry about that, but I'm gonna hold down control and click on the layer, and look what happens. It's all selected again. Oh, that's so nice, so easy. And I'm just gonna blast it with green. And I'm not gonna worry about the exact shade of green right now, I'm just gonna put some green in. Because we all know from last lesson that you can just shift the hue of any color with Photoshop. So I'm just going to put in something, kind of rough it in. So, see you later, Nicolas Cage. You are now one of the green men from Vancouver Canucks uh, games. So, remember, that's just on one layer, right? The original is still there. And now if I put them both together, I got this great big green blob on top of Nicolas Cage. So that doesn't seem too impressive right now, but guess what? There's ways for you to blend the two layers together. Every layer has something called a blend mode. Uh, and you can find that right here where it says normal. Well, there's actually a whole bunch. I'll have to zoom out. There's a whole bunch of different blend modes. And you will probably want to play around with it depending on your image and what you're trying to do with it. Uh, there's all sorts of different blend modes to take advantage of, so play with them. But always a good place to start is overlay. It just kind of overlays them on top and the green layer will become kind of see-through, almost like, you know, that, that, that plastic colored paper you can get and you can lay it on, I don't know, never mind, <laughs> it's just crazy, crazy stuff. Over there, hey, look, that's what it does, I can just click it and you can see. Ha, ah, so that layer, watch, if I move it around, it's just like the green face is like this thing that kind of overlays on top of the background. So I'll put it back to where it was. So that doesn't look particularly impressive yet, but here's why this is better than what we were doing before. Uh, you have so much control. Watch this. If I don't want the eyes to be greened, I can erase off of that green mask layer. I'm actually going to go ahead and rename that layer. Don't forget to rename your layers, folks. It, it's a good habit to get into. I'll call it green mask. 
And I'm going to get the eraser tool. And that's a little bit big. So remember how you adjust the size on an eraser tool? There's a little thing up here for you. Uh, I'll bring it down a bit. Awesome. And you can just erase off of that layer and his actual eye will show through. And you can do you know, a better job than I'm doing right now. Whatever you think is good. Uh, you can have some fun with it. You can erase like, you know, the green off his teeth. Maybe you want to keep the green on his teeth. I don't know. But I kind of don't. You could get that, those lips coming back, those, those beautiful, luscious lips of Nicolas Cage. And this is just looking a little bit scary right now. This is a little freaky, but don't be scared. It's all good. And yeah, you can have some fun with it, right? Like, you can choose what it is that you want to show through, whereas the previous lesson when we learned about adjustment layers, the whole thing is kind of controlled by that one adjustment. You can't really fine-tune it. So <laughs> this, is just, this is just getting scary, and scarier and scarier. Um, uh, another thing, like it's looking pretty like, like, wow, like that's really pixelated and green. So a nice way to affect that is uh, the opacity of that green mask. Remember opacity? What does opacity mean? How blank a layer is, fill in the blank. how transparent a layer that is. So 100% means it's not at all transparent. It's opaque. That's what that word means. It means it's not see-through. Let's bring it down. Actually, I'll just zoom out while I bring it down so you can watch. And I bring it down, it just gets a little bit less ridiculous as I go down, right? So I'm not blasting it completely. And this is a little bit more kind of what I was going for uh, at the beginning. So, you know, you can have, uh, that's at 35%, but feel free to adjust it to whatever works for your image. Uh, I'm going to put the horns on for a second. And those colors really don't quite match up. But I didn't want to waste too much time messing with the exact color at the moment. Because it doesn't matter. Once you blend the modes together, that color is going to change. So now that I have it kind of set up the way I want it to be, uh, I'm going to go back to good old image adjustments. That's what we did last class, where we made uh, Megatron red. So we're going to go to like hue saturation, for example. It would be a really good choice. And now I can just kind of move that hue around and just get them to match up. And like, just, I'm just watching here until they kind of match. It needs to be a little more orangey. Uh, that's like, that's pretty good there, I guess. Uh, you can kind of increase the intensity of the color. You know, make it absolutely not intense at all. Or just more intense. I don't know, it's up to you. You can change the lightness and brightness. Well, that's starting to look pretty awesome. There's something, someone's got to do something with that. That's, that's just looking amazing. Uh, you can try the color eyes. Remember color eyes? It sort of forces it to be a certain color, but... Uh, you know, I just kind of play with things. Like, I'm, I'm seeing the Joker here, actually. That we're kind of channeling um, the Joker. I don't know. Like, this is... this. Is, we're, we're just so many possibilities here, folks. The fun you can have with this tool. I just press cancel and just go back uh, and quickly put it right. Don't forget, use your other tools we learned about here last class, right? We learned about uh, brightness contrast. So you can do that to the mask and kind of darken things up or brighten it or lighten it. Uh, it's not really showing through too much at the moment, but you know, play with play with these things uh, that we learned from all the classes combined, and I think you'll find you get a pretty nice result. Thanks very much.